Those Shoes by Maribeth Bowlitz, illustrated by Noah Z. Jones. Those Shoes. I have dreams about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here, just need. Grandma says, and what you need are new boots for winter. Brandon T. comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Alan, Jacoby, and Terrence each get a pair. I wonder how he must feel here with everyone around him looking the same. Then one day in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy. Mr. Alfrey, the guidance counselor says. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are in my size. Velcro, like the ones my little car cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on the side from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. Hmm. I wonder what he's thinking here. I wonder what Mr. Alfrey is thinking too. When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes and laughs. And so do Terrence, Brandon T, and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn my back. I'm not going to cry about any dumb shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes. My grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. I know what it's like to think about something all the time, even when maybe you don't want to. That's a hard feeling. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. Might be enough, you never know. At the store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. I wonder how Grandma feels here. Using what I know about my Grandma, I bet she cares about him a lot. When I remember the then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoe except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop. I see something in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape, $2.50. Those shoes. My heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up and hike up my baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? 
I shoved my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. Hmm. Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoe. Oh, Jeremy, she says, I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes will fall off right then and there. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway, with my own money, and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. At home, a few days later, Grandma puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say. Grandma gives me a hug. I wonder if it's just him and his grandma and his family. That would make Grandma pretty important. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfrey's shoes, my Mr. Alfrey's to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet look smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio is there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey's shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's, Antonio's shoes smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what? Antonio says, breathing hard. Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them? Antonio asks. I shrugs. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell, and run. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. It's hard to feel two things at once. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. It's then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. I wonder why his family couldn't afford the shoes. And it makes me think about what kind of people were in the book. There was kids that had money and kids that didn't have money. What did those kids look like and what were their families like? You can definitely see the perspective of Anthony and, or Antonio and the main character and how they feel. But I'm wondering what the perspective is of these friends, the ones that can afford the shoes and what they might be thinking about the situation. I feel that's missing. I feel that someone might object to this book because it has to discuss poverty and wants versus needs or maybe about the non-traditional household of him living with his grandmother. Thank you.